Our next lab will be homemade pizza dough. So let's take a look at the ingredients that we need. We're going to need one cup of water, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. We're going to need a total of four cups of flour. We're going to measure out three cups into the stand mixer bowl and then have another cup ready on the side in case we need it later. I'll explain why you would need it later on in our show. Then we will need olive oil, which will be in a bottle like this. We only need one quarter cup, which will be measured out in our liquid measuring cup. So, let's get started. One of the very first things we need to get finished is we need to start the yeast. So we've already measured out one cup of almost hot water. Now we need to add the yeast in right away. Remember, the yeast takes time to activate, so we want to get that done. We need two and a half teaspoons, so I'm just going to reach in, just shake to level off is fine, and sprinkle that over the top of the water. That's one, two, and then I need a one-fourth teaspoon, which is your little guy here. Shake that off, put it on top. Okay, now this just rests for about five to ten minutes until it starts to bubble. So again, you need to get that started right away. Now that we've got the yeast started in the hot water, what we're going to do is begin the dough. Now we've got three cups of flour already measured out into your stand mixer bowl, and we've got one extra cup of flour just sitting on the side in case we need it later. We're going to be using the paddle attachment. We've already got that set up on the stand mixer, and we're just going to put a bowl of flour underneath. Remember, we're going to turn it counterclockwise to make it lock. Then just lower. We're going to go to the side. Remember, we want to go here where the mixer head is down so that we know it's locked. Switch it over. The other ingredient we need in here to start is our teaspoon of salt, which we've already measured out. So we're just going to go ahead and set that down in there. All right, what we want to do is mix this on a low speed for about 30 seconds. So remember, that is over on the left hand side of your mixer. All right, so we want to go to the lowest setting, so you only need to turn it up one notch. I'm just going to let that run for about 30 seconds to let the salt all get dispersed into the flour. The next ingredient we need to measure is our olive oil, which will be in a bottle like this one. You're going to measure it like any other liquid ingredient. Just pour it into the 1 4 cup mark and then check it at eye level. Ta-da! One fourth cup of olive oil. Ready to go. One group member is taking care of the mixing. Somebody else can be setting up the bowl that the dough will be stored in overnight. You're going to need the olive oil, one of your large mixing bowls, and a paper towel for this. To grease the bowl, all you need to do is put just a little bit of olive oil onto the paper towel. Alright, and then we're going to swish it all around the insides and the sides of the bowl. Okay, that way there's just a very thin layer covering all the bowl. No big drips or puddles of olive oil anywhere in here. Okay, and then we'll just throw the paper towel away into your garbage bowl. Our yeast has been sitting in the hot water for about 10 minutes. As you can see around the edges, it's starting to get mushy and a little bubbly. You'll still have some of the sprinkles in the middle. That's all right because we can see that the others have already started to activate. So what we're going to do now is add this into our dough mixture. We mixed in the flour and the salt for about 30 seconds. Now we're going to mix in the remaining ingredients. So we're going to go ahead and turn it back on low. And first we're going to add in the yeast mixture with all the water. Just gently pour it in. Okay. We're going to give that a minute to mix in just a little bit there. Now we're going to take our olive oil and again just gently let a stream of it pour in as it's mixing. See how it begins to incorporate as you pour it in? Alright, and we're going to let that mix in until it all comes together adhesively. We've had a chance for the oil and the yeast mixture to mix in a bit. Alright, so you can see it's beginning to come together still a little crumbly. So now we're just going to use our hands to mush it together a little more solidly. Scrape the dough off of the paddle. And now we're just going to mush this together, kind of like if you were making meatloaf or anything like that. You see how it all comes together pretty quickly there in a little ball. Now, if you find that when you do this, your hands are coming back really sticky, then we're going to use the extra flour you have set aside. Okay? 
I got a couple little pieces sticking on me, but otherwise it's not coming out in great big gobs, so I'm okay. If you find that your dough is a little too sticky, you're going to add a tablespoon at a time, mix it a little bit, and then try the hand motion again to see if it comes together without being a great big glob on your hand. The next thing we need to do is take out the paddle and change to our dough hook. As you can see, I've taken off the paddle and changed over to the dough hook. My dough is ready to be kneaded now by the machine. And if I didn't use any of the extra flour I had set aside, I'm going to return that to the flour container on the table. All right, so now once we've got our dough hook on here, we're going to set the mixer head down. And we need to come over to the side and lock it. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and put it up two notches. All right, and we're going to let that mix up for a few minutes and see how we're doing. All right, let's check on our dough. Let's give it a stop. All right, and we're going to lift up the dough hook. And we're going to clean that dough off, but remember we always need to unplug before we put our hands in a machine. So unplug that from the wall by holding on to the plug. Don't just yank on the cord. All right, and we're just going to pull that off. It should come off nice and easy. It's kind of hard to do with one hand because the other hand is holding the camera. Really missing my tripod right now. All right, and let's take that out and take a look at it. All right, so we have our dough here, and what we want to do is just a couple times pull from the middle and fold out, pull from the middle and fold out. And what you're going to see is you're going to see these little air bubbles popping. That means that the yeast is working, so we want that. So we're just going to do this a couple times. We're going to flip it over. We have all those little ends there. We're just going to twist them. And now we're going to put it into our mixing bowl for overnight. I have my dough ball which is nice and smooth on top and remember I pinched the bottom of it. What I'm going to do is going to take the top just kind of roll it into the grease bowl a little bit so that it gets a little teeny bit of olive oil all the way on the top then flip it over set it down in there I'm going to cover it with aluminum foil write my hour and my color on there, color of your kitchen and then we're going to leave it overnight for it to rise Okay, we can see that our dough has risen overnight. It's more than doubled in size. So the first thing we're going to do is punch it down, which is just what it sounds like. You're going to take your fist and punch down into the dough. And you can see how that releases all the air. Now we're going to pull it out. Now it might still be a little cool from the refrigerator, so we're just going to work it with our hands a little bit. And again, it shouldn't be sticky. It wasn't yesterday. We can still see those bubbles popping. Now one thing that people tend to make the mistake on when making homemade pizza is that they think that they need to use up the entire pan. And you can make it whatever size you want depending on how thick or how thin you want the crust to be. So don't worry about making it the exact same size of the pan. Just worry about making it the thickness that you want. The only thing is you obviously can't make it bigger than the pan. Since your dough isn't real sticky, we shouldn't need to flour the counter. We do need to make sure that it's clean beforehand, so one of the first things we're going to do on day two is make sure we have down the counters first so that it's clean. All right, and as we begin rolling out the dough, we're going to begin with our hands before we bring out the rolling pin. All right, and you just want to use the heel of your palm, just kind of push it around a little bit, and then essentially what we're going to do is just stretch it a little bit. I'm not pulling real hard, just working it with my hands here. Now, people have been doing this for years and years. Okay, can toss it in the air like you see on TV. We're not going to be throwing things today here in class. All right? So we just kind of want to work the dough first to get it a bit stretched out with our hands before we even bring out the rolling pin. Okay, so I'm just getting finished working out the dough with my hands. You can see how I've got the little hand prints all across it. Alright, if you still want to get the dough a little thinner or stretch it out a little more, you can bring in the rolling pin. The reason you want to start working it with your hands is because the heat from your hands helps it loosen up a bit and it will spread out easier than if you just start cold with the rolling pin. So if you'd like, you can use it to roll it out a little more. You want to start from the middle and work your way out. That way you keep your circular shape. 
again, you only have to roll it out as large as you want it. Now when you go to transfer it from the counter onto your pan, it will shrink a little and you'll have to pull it back out a bit. That's just the nature of that gluten protein, which stretches and shrinks. Uh, look at that. So you can see it went from a circle to kind of a little ovally shape. So I'm just going to pull it out. Now mine just happens to be about the shape and size of the pan. That's because I've used this pan a lot of times. But again, if you want your crust to be thicker, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to use up the entire pan. Okay. All right. Now, some people who want a thicker crust on the outside may pinch to the outside to make more dough on the outside. It will always kind of form that way anyway because any of the crust that's covered by sauce, cheese, and toppings is going to be a little thinner on the outside. But if you want to make sure you get a good handle on your pizza, you can kind of push a little dough to the outside. Okay, next step is you're going to put on your sauce, put your cheese on top, then we're going to bake it in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes at 425 degrees.